Surat Al-Fajr and Surat Al-Balad are another pair. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wal-Fajr, wal-Ayal al-Ashr, wal-Shafi wal-Watr, wal-Layl iza yasr. Hal fi zalika qasam al-Zi hijr. Sadaq Allah al-Azim. As I said before also, this subject of the oaths of Quran is a very difficult subject. Somewhere, it's easy to understand what is muqsam bihi, what is muqsam alayh. With what the oath is being taken on, on what the oath is being taken. And there is a rational connection between the two. But at most of the other places, there are several, you know, interpretations and several meanings given by Mufassireen. But there are places where we can't say surely what is the exact meaning. Well, Fajr, by the dawn. Now I understand that as I said before, was subh is a asfar. It denoted in Surah Al-Mudassir the advent of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The beginning of the prophethood of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Was subh is a asfar. In the same way, I, I think that here also, the, it is being pointed in that direction by the dawn. Walayal in Ashim and by the ten nights. Mostly people think these are the ten nights of Zul Hijjah. First ten days of Zul Hijjah. They are very sacred. Washafi Walwatr. By the even and the odd. Many sayings are there about the interpretation. Wallail is a yasr. And by the night when it departs, this again, as far as I think, denotes to the advent of the Prophet, the night is departing. Wallail is adbar. Wasubh is a asfar. So in the beginning, fajr, and the end, wallail is a yasr. And then the night, by the night, when it departs. Halfi is alika qasabul lezi hijr. Is there not in that an oath? for a man. Now, the historical events, only brief mentions of Qawm Aad and Sabood and so on. Alam tara kaifa fa'ad rabbu ka bi'ad? Didn't you see? What your Lord did with the nation of Aad? How he dealt with them? Iram azat al-imad of Iram, having very high pillars. They say that Iram was the name of the city. Ad was the name of the nation. Iram was the city. And that is said generally, Jannatul Shaddad. Shaddad was an emperor of Ad. And he has, you know, a city he established. A very beautiful, all gardens. And then on the ramparts there were very high pillars. So Iram Azat al that city of Iram, which had very high pillars. Allati lam yukhlaq mislaha fil bilad. The like of whom were never created in the lands. That was for the first time. It must be at least 6,000 years from now. And there was some news that now this city has been seen under the desert. There are the remnants of the city present. Now because there are techniques with which they can see what is beneath the soil. Otherwise over it is a very bad desert. Nothing stands over there. Everything sinks into the, into the sand. Quick sands. أَلَمْ تَرَا كَيْفَ فَعَادَ رَبُّكَ بِعَادٍ إِرَمَزَاتِ الْحِمَادٍ الَّتِي لَمْ يُخْلَقْ مِسْلُهَا فِي الْبِلَادِ وَسَمُودَ الَّذِينَ جَابُوا الصَّخْرَ بِعِوَادِ And you know, you see what your Lord did with Samud? Who carved the rocks in the valleys. They can be seen till today. In Hijr, about 100 miles northwest of Medina. There are, you know, in the mountains they have carved big halls. Big houses, palaces, they are still modulated. But Firaun is Lautad. And then you see how your Lord dealt with Firaun. The Firaun who had the 
10 pegs, you know, little altar. So big an army, that with that army there used to be tents. And to erect the tents, they needed pegs. So even the pegs were so great in number, that several hundred horses or camels were carrying the pegs only. So Fir'aun Azil Awtad, this became his name. Al-Ladina Tawafil Bilad, those who transgressed in the lands. Now this Tuhyani is in respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whosoever transgresses from the limits of obedience, because for jinns and humans, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْمُنُونَ Whosoever rises above this level, so he is Tughyan, Taghut, الَّذِينَ تَغَوْ فِي الْبِلَادِ فَأَكْسَرُوا فِيهَا الْفَسَادِ And as a result, they multiplied therein corruption and mischief. Now these are two dimensions. Tagha against Allah and fasad among the mankind. When you are transgressing against Allah, then you know there shall be oppressions, there will be killings, there will be all sorts of mischiefs and miscreants. So this is two aspects. Ibadullah, Hukukullah or Hukukul Ibad. Regarding Hukukullah, they transgressed. Regarding Hukukul Ibad, they created corruption and mischief in the land. فَصَبَّ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّكَ سَوْتَ عَزَابِ So your Lord, let loose on them the lashes of punishment. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَبِ الْمِرْسَادِ Verily your Lord is ever on the watch. فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانَ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَّمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَبًا وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَحَانًا These are the two central ayat of this surah and they give you the central theme of this surah. Before this, fourteen ayat, all small, small, small. After that also, then from seventeenth onwards, very small ayat. But these are long ayat, two. Formal insanu as for man. Izam abtalahu rabbuhu, whenever his Lord tries him, tests him, by honoring him and blessing him, he says, فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا إِذَابَ أَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ He honors him and blesses him. Then he says, My Lord has honored me. وَأَمَّا إِذَابَ أَبْتَلَاهُ But when his Lord tries him and tests him, فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ and straighten the restricts for him his sustenance. فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَحَانًا Then he says, My Lord has humiliated me. What is wrong in it? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you wealth, all the you know, blessings of this world, if you say Allah has honored me, is it wrong? If you are poor and you know your needs are not fulfilled. If you say Allah has humiliated me, what's wrong in it? He is not attributing it to any other God, Allah. Allah has honored me, Allah has humiliated me. But what's the wrong? What's the mistake? The mistake is that if Allah gives you plenty, this is also a test, not honor. And if He gives you less, this is also a test, not humiliation. Both conditions are equal in this respect. They are for testing. The honor will be on that day. Whosoever is honored on that day, he will be honored. Zalika yawmut tahabut. Allah will gather them and that day will be So actually to think that this is honor, this is wrong. If you are poor you think you have been humiliated, this is wrong. 
both conditions are equal. They are tests. Rather, they should be one step further. Now, these are, you know, steps, guidance, and, you know, going on the wrong path, step by step. The highest dhalal dhalalam ba'ida would be, then if Allah has given you something in play, and, you know, blessed you, you say this is from Laat or Uzza or Manat, and when you are in trouble, you say that Hubal is perhaps angry from me, but this is the shirk, this is the worst, you know, thing that can a, a, a man can adopt. But you come ne lower down, well, Allah has honored me, Allah has humiliated me. Comparing to that person, he is on a better place, that he is attributing honor or humiliation to Allah, not to any other God. But if he thinks that this in this world what is given to him is honor, and if there is poverty or something of that type, then it is humiliation, it is wrong. Neither the honor is honor nor humiliation is humiliation. Both are equal. But there is certain a, a further level of guidance. You may think that the testing by way of inflictions, and sort of pain, this test is greater, harder than the test when he blesses, when he gives plenty. No. Real case is the reverse. When he, give, when he gives you plenty, you will tend to forget him. When you are in need, you will turn to him. So that examination, that test is worse. Then the test of poverty or pain, because if you are, you know, enjoying life, rejoicing, everything in plenty, then you will forget Allah. If you are in pain, if you are afflicted by something, you will turn to Allah. And that is what happened with Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah. When you know from the government level, the idea of creativity of Qur'an, that Qur'an is also created. This aqidah was being enforced by the state, by government. And he stood up, I am not going to accept this. If you can produce some argument, some proof from the book of Allah or the sayings of his Prophet, then I will say, if you can't produce any Proof, I, I won't accept. He was beaten, beaten, beaten. They say he was beaten in a way that even if a element was beaten, elephant was beaten in that way, you know, that would have not been able to bear it. But he never wept. He took all the beatings. But then the conditions changed. Now the Khalifa, who took over from the former Khalifa, he believed in the same thing in which Ahmad ibn Hanbal believed. Now from the court of the Khalifa, a messenger came with some golden gold pieces, ashrafis, dinars, that the Khalifa has sent this for you as a gift, as a present. Now he wept. Oh Allah, I can't stand this test. This is harder. To be able to resist temptation is more difficult than to resist the persecution. So these are the three levels. فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا No. It's not the honor. You are mistaken. وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ وَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَحَانًا No. This is not humiliation. Allah, no, no, not at all. Bal la tu krebun al yatim. But your characters, most of you have fallen down so much regarding morality that you don't honor the orphan. This is the condition of the Arabian society at that time. 
They had gone so low, generally speaking. There were exceptions, but generally. لَا تُكْرِمُونَ الْيَتِيمُ وَلَا تَحَاضُونَ عَلَىٰ تَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ And you do not urge others even to feed the needy and, and hungry. وَتَاكُلُونَ تُرَاسَ عَقْلَ الْلَمَّةِ And you eat up all the inheritance with devouring greed. Don't let take anybody else, anything else. Take all the inheritance. This was the practice with them. The older son, he inherited everything. Nothing to even the younger sons. Nothing. What to speak of daughters? So, Taakuruna Turasa Akla Lamma Wa Tuhibbun Al-Mala Hubban Jamma And you love wealth with abounding love. Kalla. Certainly not. Iza Dukkati Al-Lardu Dakkan Dakka When the earth will be crushed into powder, or when the earth will be beaten flat by continuous beating. These are two translations done by two sons of Shah Waliullah Dehlvi. Shah Rafiuddin, Rahimahullah, and Shah Abdul Qadir. One has translated when the earth will be crushed into powder. And the other, when the earth will be beaten flat by continuous beating and beating and beating and beating. So, it becomes flat. No mountains, nothing of the source, no heights, no depths, no oceans. We have re read that the seas will be flowed out and they will become dry. So the whole earth will be one piece, plain, simple, and stretched. This we have already read in Surah Tulin Shaitaq. By the Lardo Muddat, it will be stretched so that it holds all the mankind at once, standing before the Lord. Because this will, this is going to become the, the ground where, you know, that reckoning and judgment will be passed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we say in Persian, Qissa is Amin, Barsar is Amin. This is the matter of this earth, whatever we have earned, working here, living here. So all the matters will be decided here. So the next ayah is very important. Maja Rabbu Kaval Malaku Safan Safa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will himself descend to this earth. We can't say how this descent will be. But this is it. Just as we have the hadith that every night in the small hours of the morning, Allah comes down to the nearest heaven, Samayat Dunya. And then, it is called, Hal min mustaghfirin, tawfir Allah. Is there anybody asking for forgiveness? So I should forgive him? Hal min sailin, tawatiyahu. Is there someone requesting me something? So that I should grant it to him. Now, one step more, every night he comes to the first heaven, on that day he will descend further and he will come on this earth. Vajā Rabbuka and your Lord and the angels rank upon rank, wal malaku saffan saffa. Now this flattened earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's descent, the angels and all the humans, from Adam till the last man of his progeny, which will come in this earth, in this world, till the end of this world. And then the hell will be brought face to face with them. On that day, man will receive admonition, he will be reminded, he will come to his senses. Now to what avail? He's coming to senses. He's getting the admonition. He's getting the reminding now is of no avail. 
یقول یا لئی تنی قدم تو لے حیاتی ہی ویل سی ووڈ دیٹ آئی ہیڈ فارورڈڈ سم گوڈ فار دس لائف آف مائن ناو اٹ ویل ڈان اپاؤ ہم دس از دی لائف آئی تھاٹ دیٹ لائف ان دی دیٹ ورلڈ واز دی ریئل لائف That was only a preface to life. The real book of life has opened today. And alas, I sent nothing for this life. I kept working, 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 only for that life. The requirements or the facilities, conveniences or luxuries of this life. يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي فَيَوْمَ اِذِ اللَّا يُعَزِّرُ عَذَابَهُ أَحَدُ So none can chastise as he shall chastise on that day. وَلَا يُوسِقُ وَسَاقَهُ أَحَدُ And no one can bind anyone as he shall bind these disbelievers. They will be bound and chastised. In the end these four small ayat are very heartening. And blessed are the souls to whom Allah will say these words. You can only pray that Allah includes us also. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutmainnah O you soul that remained at peace. Nafsul mutmainnah Nafsul lawama in Surah Qiyamah نفس امارا ان صورت یوسف نفس مطمئنہ this is the highest spiritual station for the soul and spirit of man and what is this اتمنان whether something good is coming to you or whether something which is unpleasant coming to you you stand there like a rock not to be influenced by these changing conditions whatever is coming is coming from my lord ہر چیز ساتھی ہمارے ایک تہنے التافست and you are there فرم اِنَّ النَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ سُمَّ اسْتَقَابُوا so you are نفس مطمئنہ the contended soul the satisfied soul the soul or spirit which is at peace with himself to be at peace with yourself is also not easy job repenting, what this happened, why happened, this should not have happened, what I did, I should not have done this. You are there, wavering this way, that way. But if you have accepted Allah as your Lord, whatever has come, it's from Him. نَشَوَدْ نَصِيبِ دُشْمَنْ كِ شَوَدْ هَلَاكِ تَيْغَدْ سَرِ دُوستان سَلَامَتْ كِ تُخَنْجَرْ آزْمَائِ Oh Allah, whatever you please is, I am ready. At least we should be like Hazrat Ismail when he said to his father Ibrahim, Satajaduni insha'Allah min as-sabirin. Oh father, go on. Go ahead. Do what you have been commanded to do. And God willing, you will find me forbearing, patient. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutmainna. Oh, the contented and satisfied soul, irjai la rabbi ke raziyatam mardiyya. Now return unto your Lord, well pleased by your Lord, and well pleasing to your Lord. Your Lord is pleased with you, and you will be pleased with Him. Raziyatam mardiyya. And many times we find the verse, رضی اللہ عنہم و رضو عنہ اللہ بات پلیس بھی دیم اور دیم اور پلیس بھی اللہ سبحانہ وسلم this will happen in the paradise or jannah but here also you should remain pleased with whatever اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی decides for you no complaint we read it in سورة التغابر ما اصاب من مصیبت الا بے اذن اللہ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ يَحْدِ قَلْبَهِ يَا اَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّ تُرْجِعِي إِلَىٰ رَبِّكِ غَاضِيَةً مَرْضِيَةً فَادْخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي رَغُو and enter 
مائی بانڈز مین مائی سرونٹس من النبیین و صدیقین و شہداء و صالحین نائی یو ویل ہیو دی کمپنی آف دیم بد خلی جنتی گو اینڈ اینٹر مائی گارڈن مائی پیراڈائز 